Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to the face and the card making space and more Halloween cards. These ones, kind of simple, but still kind of fun. I used the Simon Says Stamp Wavy Rays stencil. This was part of their newest release and it got to me a little later. And when I got it, I looked at it and I was like, okay. And then ideas merged. And there's been a lot of advertising and things for the new Beetlejuice movie, which very excited for that. And it all just came together. <laughs> which you saw the thumbnail, you know where I went with this, but I had fun. I had fun. This, this, uh, it's fun when like a random, really weird idea in your head. I was like, is this going to work? It worked. So I combined it with some oldie but goodie products, things like that. Really simple, added some splatter, and as always, everything I used will be listed and linked in the description box below the video. My links are affiliate links, that just means that if you click on one of my links, end up placing an order, I get a little kickback from that at no extra cost to you, so it helps pay the bills, keeps the channel going. And at the end of the video, I'll have a link to my playlist for the 2024 Halloween series. For those that might be new, I have many playlists. I have over a decade of them, specifically Halloween card videos. There are a lot of them. They're just fun to make. I really enjoy it. So you can check those out on my channel as well. And yeah, let's get into making these cards. So I've got the Wavy Rays stencil and a couple panels of white smooth cardstock from Simon's Stamp. And I stuck the cardstock to my Altenew grip mat and then figured out how I wanted to place the stencil because just the way it is, you can, especially working on a rectangle shape, you can kind of move the stencil around to where you want, you know, the, um, like the center of those rays to be. So got it laid out and then I'm using a uh, Distress Texture Paste Black Opaque love I've used this in at least a couple other Halloween videos so far this came out last year and then it became part of like Rangers like permanent line and I have discussed and shown in past videos like trying to tint white paste black which is an absolute pain in the butt don't recommend it's it's kind of annoying and the black can like leach out this paste doesn't do that love so I applied it first with a palette knife and then I'm going in with my big, my big stencil pal, like scraper, just to smooth it out, get full coverage. It doesn't need to be perfectly smooth. I'm not really like worried about that. I just wanted to get, you know, full coverage and then remove the stencil. And this is where I knew things were starting to work. So I was like, I wasn't sure because, you know, such a large openings on a stencil on white cardstock with a black paste. I was like, this could turn into like a hot mess. However... Always keep an open mind because it's it's Halloween cards. Like there's always ways and you can kind of work with a hot mess, but this worked out really well. So after I'd removed it from the, the grip mat, I actually just used my, my palette knife and like scraped off the excess paste right off the mat and then repeated the process on a second card front. Because why not? When I've got everything out, let's do it a second time. And like I say, with pace, use your pace. Do not hoard them. <laughs> pace have a shelf life no matter what like even if they are factory sealed they are not meant to last forever that is not a product you need to collect we can collect all the other things you know stamps and dies and and card stocks and all that kind of stuff but pace do not last forever extending the life of them though is possible i use press and seal i'll have a link to it because simon ships that internationally because it is hard for people to get but that is one way to extend the life of your pace so i put a piece of press and seal on there seal it up real good because th that container of paste i've had since it came out last year when i bought it and it's still going fine but yeah paste do not last forever so i wiped off my grip mat cleaned my stencil and my palette knife in the sink let those dry splatter i am using distress watercolor pencils if you are new to them or new to my channel. I did a video back when the Distress Watercolor Pencils were released making this little palette. I will link to that video in the end screen at the end of this video. 
And I have been using this as like my splatter palette, which has been super awesome. And um, swirled my fan brush in this yellow well. I'd got it wet with water and I'm doing this quite a bit. I wanted a lot on my brush. I wanted my brush really loaded because I want big splotchy splatter for this. And then I splattered it on both these backgrounds. And I specifically went with Distress, like the watercolor pencil palette, because these are pretty opaque. So they would show up on top of that black Distress paste. Uh, paint, like Distress paint would work as well. Works great. Um, I just, I really like working with the watercolor pencils for splatter. It's perfection. So after I did my splatter, I set those aside to work on my sentiments. And this is the Circle Sayings set that came out um, a couple years ago and it's got a happy Halloween but there's also Christmas, Thanksgiving, birthday. It's a good kind of all-around little sentiment set and I stamped it onto some of Simon's, um, I think it's green apple cardstock. Used my antiseptic powder tool first, stamped the sentiment with clear embossing ink, covered it with detail white embossing powder, melted it with my heat tool, wiped away the excess antiseptic powder with my microfiber cloth, and there's a little circle wafer die that comes with the set or you can get it separately or just use a circle wafer die. And I use that to die cut these sentiments. And then after I had die cut them, I pulled out um, Fairway positively saturated ink so that I can ink blend this around the sentiments just to make it a little more of an intense green. And because the sentiments are heat embossed, they will resist that ink. So I just use a little a little blending brush and blended that around the, the perimeter of the die cut and then used the cloth to wipe away um, any of the ink that's sitting on top of the embossing powder because you can see it's kind of like tinted green but again it resists the ink so wipe it away and then I repeat the process on the second piece. So this just gets it more to that that bright um, bright green shade I was going for plus it just gives the like the sentiment just a little bit more like depth so did that to both of my sentiments wiped away the the ink sitting on top of the embossing and then for my other little embellishment I'm using the bat trio wafer die set and some purple glitter cardstock this is from the Ulta new uh, purple galore <laughs> glitter cardstock set so I die cut a bunch of little bats from the glitter cardstock and I also pulled out some purple baker's twine from my stash. And by now, obviously the panel is dry, you know, the splatter is dry, the paste is dry, everything's good to go. So I wrapped the baker's twine around the panel, used my reverse tweezers to hold the knot in place so I can sit and fiddle and get the, the bow the way I wanted it. Did the same thing with the second card. And then to adhere the sentiment, I'm just popping that up with some foam squares give that a little extra bit of dimension just like so and then the little bats I'm going to adhere with just some craft tacky glue and I'm only going to add adhesive just to like the body so the wings are popped up a bit because it gives it that little extra bit of of depth so I adhered those into place pulled out another one and adhered that to the the bottom of the card there so I've got my little purple sparkly bats. And then for the insides of the cards, my cards are top folding A2 white note cards. Stuck the card base to my grip mat. Put some post-it tape right where the score line is so I don't get any ink past the score line. And then I'm using the wavy rays stencil again. But this time I'm using a lighter green ink. This is uh, celery ink. So it'll give the pattern to the inside of the card, but it's not so intense that I can't, you know, easily write over this and it be legible. So lighter green ink for that. And then same thing, repeat the process on the second card base. So just reuse the post-it tape. I've talked about this before. I keep my post-it tape. I just stick it to the top of my die cut machine and I'll just keep reusing it over and over again until there's, there's nothing left of it, you know? So you did the same thing on the second card panel got that blended onto the inside of the card and then I die cut um, like more of those bats from the purple glitter cardstock and adhere those to the insides of the cards and then I'm going to adhere my panels to the outsides of the cards with craft tacky glue so get those stuck into place and then I dug through my stash and found some green uh, crystals so yeah 
I've, I've talked about, I have like lifetimes, multiple lifetimes of playing. I can generally find a color that'll work. So I found some green crystals and sprinkled those around both of these card fronts as well. And then once I was happy with um, that, I'm going to adhere those into place with just little dabs of craft tacky glue. And then I just got to let the glue dry and these cards are complete. So yeah, very Beetlejuice inspired. Loads of fun. Pretty simple to do really. And we've got the texture from the, the black opaque texture paste and the splatter and the glittery bats and the bling and the and the baker's twine and the sentiment and yeah they were they were they were super fun so like i mentioned in the intro i will have links to all of the things in the description box below the video so if you just expand the description box there'll be a supply list links to everything links to my social medias link to my blog post etc all that will be below for anyone who is interested and thank you all so much for watching thumbs upping subscribing commenting all the things i very much appreciate it and i'll see you all in the next one Bye. Thank you so much to my amazing Patreon supporters. For anyone that might be interested in supporting me over on Patreon, the link to that is in the description box below the video. For everyone else, as always, thank you all so much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping, commenting, subscribe if you haven't, I'd love to have you. And here's a couple other videos for you to check out in case you missed them. Bye.